Good evening ladies and gentlemen, how are we getting on? Welcome to a brand new Fallout 76 video. So, we are an estimated two weeks or so out from the Gleaming Depths update. It's likely to be either the first or second Tuesday in December, the first one being two weeks away as we speak. And I'm predicting that's probably when the update's going to be, just a guess, but... And uh, as such, Bethesda have gotten a little ahead of announcing some of the changes that will be coming in that update as they will require some forethought and planning. Specifically, as you may be aware, they have been working on changes to a number of perk cards on the PTS in recent months. So there have been little tweaks over time, changes here and there, we've talked about it a little bit before, but they have now released a Inside the Vault post with most likely finalised versions of the perks as they will be coming in the next update, or going on from the next update. So you may well want to uh, strap in and take some notes here, because uh, there will be some changes, things moving around. Mostly, mostly, it should constitute a buff, but it will require some reworking of uh, loadouts and stuff. So yeah, we're going to jump in, take a little look at this. As a little reminder, when this update changes over, obviously, either the first or the second or Tuesday in December, probably the first one, then that will be when Season 18 ends and Season 19 begins as well. So if you are chasing rank 100, then uh, that's the one to keep an eye out for, probably about two weeks from now. So let's have a look at this. Okay, so we have our Inside the Vault blog post, and it says, Hey, Vault Dwellers! The Gleaming Depths update releases with some substantial balancing changes to a handful of perk cards. We wanted to make sure you had a heads up on what's changing so that you can prepare your builds for the update. Our goal was generally to take underperforming perks and to make them more interesting and easy to incorporate into your builds by removing some extra ranks, lowering the cost, and changing their effect to scale with the related primary stat. Should be stat, not state there. So here's a look at the perk card changes. So, as an Umbra overview, basically the biggest shift is that whilst some stuff under the Endurance special tree was useful, it was a bit situational and it was a relatively low priority stat on the whole. You know, generally you'd put your points into damage output as opposed to damage resistance, with the exception of certain builds. So that is now getting a buff to be more useful to everybody. And a few things that are elsewhere in the, the spread are being moved into that particular list of perks. So you'll free up some perks elsewhere and you'll be using a few more in uh, Endurance is the, the overview. But here are the specifics. Adamantium Skeleton, instead of having three ranks, will be reduced to one. And limb damage reduction effect will now scale with your endurance so the more endurance perks you have or points into endurance you have the more effective adamantium skeleton becomes all night long also being reduced from three to one ranks and rank one perk point cost has been increased from one to two so it costs two but you'll only have to buy it once so it's a small um, reduction in the cost of that one and now the positive effects of pre-war alcohol last twice as long. So it's had a little buff in that regard as well. Batteries included. Ranks reduced from 3 to 2. And you get a 45 and a 90% weight reduction. So this is energy ammo weight being reduced. There we go. Bloodsucker. Ranks reduced from 3 to 1. Again, moved from Charisma into Endurance. And rank 1 gains the effects of the former rank 3 effect. So everything's just condensed down. So healing bonus has been increased from 150% to 200% from blood pack saddleby. And the additional effects and benefits now also apply to cannibal. Not quite sure exactly how that interacts. I guess the two interact more. Um, not having used either of those perks. Who knows? Maybe I will in future. Especially when the ghoul comes out next year. That might be a bit more of a thing to consider. Might be fun. Hmm, maybe. Maybe not. We'll see how we feel. Anyway, Bullet Shield moves from Strength over to Endurance. So if you are a heavy weapons user, one of the issues with that particular build, such as it is, is that there are more perks to cram potentially into your Strength tree than are, there are slots to put them in. Um, more than 15 points worth. So moving Bullet Shield over to Endurance basically means a better heavy gunner build. So it's a, definitely a buff to your heavy guns builds. So, that's moved from Strength to Endurance, and it is getting an extra rank, and the new effect will be 5% 5 chance per rank to deflect range attacks for 6 seconds when firing a heavy weapon. So, increasing your damage resistance when you're firing your heavy guns. 
The Cannibal is having its ranks reduced from 3 to 1 and increase the healing received and hunger restored at rank 1, so it will become more effective but in a single rank. Whether or not that will be a net gain or a net uh, decrease overall I don't know, but it certainly condenses it and frees up some points to put elsewhere if you want to, so uh, any loss will likely be able to be offset with the extra points you now have available to spend elsewhere. So there is that. Cap Collector, reduced from three per ranks to one, now applies to containers and corpses, not just cap stashes, and the amount of caps found scales with your luck attribute. So that's just become considerably more useful, which is cool. What's slightly less useful is the fact that it's cap related, and there are a few things recently that have been added that are worth buying with caps, but on the whole, you do tend to run out of things to spend your caps on eventually. If you are wondering what to spend them on, some suggestions would include run over to the White Spring and clean out the vendors there of all of the plans they have. So you've got everything. Um, another option would be Milepost Zero. There's, I believe, some stuff you can buy there for caps. And go to player camps because people are probably going to start selling legendary um, attributes for you to attach to your weapon in you know, boxed legendary effects. So uh, it might be an option to spend some caps on that. Just a thought. Anyway... Moving on, scroll down a little bit. Evasive, ranks reduced from 3 to 1, and now increases evade chance based on agility instead of based on the number of ranks you have. So yeah, more perks into more points into agility equals more evasive if you have the card attached. So yeah, scaling that way. First aid, reduced from 3 ranks to 1, now also affects Stimpak Diffuser. And Stimpak Healing scales with intelligence, so the smarter you are, the more benefits you get from your Stimpaks. Okay. Four Leaf Clover has had its ranks reduced from 3 to 1, and now misses in VATs contribute to critical meter based on luck. So more luck, your VAT meter, your VAT's critical meter rather, will go up faster. So if you go for a VAT's critical build, it's just got more useful, I think. Hard Bargain reduced from 3 to 1 ranks, and rank 1 now gains plus 7 to charisma while barging with NPC. So takes up less space and gives you a flat buff instead. Of course, that will in some ways be modified by what your charisma stat is. So if you have a charisma of 1, you will end up with a total of 8. If you have a charisma of 15, you'll end up with a total of 22. So it does kind of scale with your charisma, but it builds off of the stat instead. So yeah, interesting. It does change the functionality a little bit. Iron Stomach now also increases energy resistance. Makes that a bit more useful. Junk Shield. Ranks reduced from 3 to 1, and now also works well in power armor. So if you're carrying a load of um, junk and scrap around, you'll have a better chance to deflect damage, or not take damage. It also now scales with luck. So presumably the amount of damage reduced is increased with luck, or possibly the chance of it happening, as opposed to the amount being changed by the amount of junk. I'm not exactly sure. A nuance we'll have to uh, check out in-game if that's one you use. Uh, not a big priority, that one, though, I don't suppose. Life Giver has had its ranks reduced from 3 to 1, and now the HP gained improves based on your endurance. Again, so more endurance makes Life Giver more effective. Lone Wanderer reduced to 1 rank from 3, and new effect AP regen and defense bonus are based on Charisma. So Charisma just became substantially more useful than it currently is for solo players. Um, in order to gain the benefits of Lone Wanderer. So if you prefer running solo like me, then you might want to take a long hard look at this one because you might want to shove some of these new freed up ranks that you have into your charisma tree in order to gain the benefits of that. Especially if you're going to do the challenging thing, which is tackling some of the new content solo, because it's not meant to be done that way and will likely be quite difficult. So food for thought there. Natural resistance no longer increases energy resistance. Um, it's supposed to just re increase your resistance to disease, I believe. Um, so that's really just a bug fix rather than an out-and-out -out change. Um, I assume this was an unlisted pass passive effect that was going on. I hadn't noticed it myself because I don't use it. There we go. Um, yeah, technically a nerf to natural resistance, but I don't think it was massively popular anyway. So just what it is. Can't have them all be buffs, can we? There we go, that's the bottom of the list, so we're nearly there now. Night Eyes. So this is an interesting one. Not a perk that I think got a vast amount of use before, but it's about to become considerably more useful. In that, it now works at any time of day, not just at night. So you guys might have noticed that the 
nights have gotten a little darker recently, particularly post the mid-season update um, in October. And uh, yeah, this basically, I can confirm, is something that's supposed to be coming in the Gleaming Depths update at the start of December that sort of bled through a little early. I got to talk to John Rush, who is one of the lead designers on 76 um, last week, actually, when I was down at the Bethesda offices in London. And this was one thing we got to mention in um, a, a roundtable that we had, was the graphics changes that will be coming with the Gleaming Depths update. And in short, there will be a number of visual improvements. Again, visual improvements, they put little bits in here and there from time to time in various updates anyway. You kind of don't notice overall, because they are little bits here and there in dribs and drabs, but... There's another one coming anyway in December, and one of those effects would be the Darker Nights that has appeared a little earlier than intended. So, getting back to the Night Eyes perk, this will basically offset some of those Darker Nights. It'll also mean if you're in an internal location where it's dark, you can take advantage of this perk at any time of day as well, so making it a lot more useful. But yeah, hopefully that's an interesting little heads up on that one for you. Moving onward... Ordnance Express, for those of you who like to carry lots of grenades. Ranks reduced from 3 to 2, and rank 1 now is a 45% weight reduction, rank 2 90%. So, yeah, it just frees up an extra strength perk, I believe that one is. And yeah, it lines up with the one we saw for the energy ammo before. Um, I'm wondering if we will see a change to ballistic ammo, but uh, possibly not, I don't know. Or maybe at a future date. Pharmacist. Ranks have been reduced from 3 to 1, and radiation healing now scales with intelligence, and it's no longer required to craft disease cures or water filters. Okay, so Pharmacist, I believe, increases the effect of beneficial chems, is that right? Something like that. You know, double check yourself when you're, if you're using it. But that should free up a bunch of um, extra points for you anyway in, I believe, the intelligence tree. Possibly the endurance one. Mm. <laughs> I'm on the spot now and I can't remember. But there we are. Either way, it's going to free up some special points to spend elsewhere. Professional Drinker has had its ranks reduced from 3 to 2, so there's another freed up point if you have to use that one. Ricochet, back to the luck tree. Ranks now reduced from 3 to 1. And the new effect, or the changed effect, depending on how you want to look at it, is it now increases your deflect chance based on your luck stats. So more points into luck, more likely to deflect damage coming in at you. Deflect grants a chance to reflect 100% of damage from ranged attacks back at the attacker and reduces the damage you take from the effect by 50. So you'll take half half damage, but 100% of it will be reflected back on the person who attacked you. Okay, if it's a ranged weapon. Deflect chance receives a bonus while wearing heavy armor or power armor. So this is some, uh, there's some category changes going on here uh, to different armor types, but they are logical. So if it looks like it should be heavy, it probably will be. Uh, and that gives a benefit of uh, a 50% multiplier. While in power armor, the amount of damage reflected is doubled. So they'll take double the damage they attempted to deal to you instead, making this uh, more valuable across the board, I think. Serendipity has had its ranks reduced from 3 to 1 as well, and now increases evade chance while under 30% life based on luck. Now, previously, I think that was 20%, so that just became slightly more useful. I could be wrong on that, though. Uh, an evade now provides a chance to evade all incoming damage from direct attacks. Can happen once a second, and the cooldown is now increased by armor. So evade cannot happen while over encumbered or in power armor. However, different types of armor increasing the cooldown period. So the heavier your armor, the less often serendipity will tick for you. So you get a 0.1 second um, increase if you're in light armor. You get a 0.2 if you're in medium armor, and a 0.4 second uh, delay if you're in heavy armor. So, yeah, not big really, but uh, it does make a difference. It's especially when you're in power armor, so no point in having that on your power armor build. Last two, starch jeans. This is important. It has been reduced from two ranks to a single rank, and it has been moved from luck to endurance. So now rank one provides the full benefits of the perk. So, good, that frees up an extra special slot to, or special point to spend elsewhere. However, it's been moved out of luck into endurance. And as a reminder, Starch Jeans does a number of things, but particularly it will stop you from accidentally removing mutations by using Radaway. Uh, it'll also stop you gaining mutations while you've got it active. 
but it's particularly useful when not accidentally wiping mutations from you. So you will need to know about this one and check it, preferably as soon as you jump in after the update, so you don't get caught out and lose your mutations. Important one, that one. And through Hiker is the last one. This reduces uh, the weight of food, I believe. Ranks reduced from 3 to 2, and it's been moved from Agility to Endurance. Again, making the Endurance per uh, tree, column, whatever you want to call it, slightly more useful. And Rank 1 now offers 45% weight reduction, and Rank 2 offers 90, as with the previous perks we saw. So there we go. Mostly a shift of things into the Endurance tree from other places, and a reduction in the special point cost of a number of different perks, as well as, for most of them, a little buff to how they work, or at least a potential buff, depending on how many points you put into different special attributes. So, definitely going to require a rejig, a replanning, and consideration of your build. I will link this post in the description. I suggest you find it, check it out, and um, have it at your side while you go through the um, your build once the update goes live, because it will make your life a lot easier, and you'll be able to just cross-reference one by one and work down the list and say, do I use this, do I need to change that, and so on, rather than just trying to kind of wade through the whole lot at once and just find the things that have changed. You know, I think that'll probably make your life a bit easier. So yeah, link in the description if you want to check that out. But there we go. These are all the perk card changes that will be coming with the update in most likely two weeks. They still haven't given us an actual finalised date yet, but it's probably going to be the first Tuesday of December, which, as I say, is two weeks from today, so that's the third. And so, hope you guys found that useful and informative. If you did, please consider dropping subs and likes. I very much appreciate Hit that notification bell if you want to keep up to date with all the videos. And you can check out channel memberships if you want to support the channel that way as well. I really, really appreciate. Massively helps out. Huge thanks to everyone who's done that as well. And if you've got a bit of time to kill, enjoy us for live streams as well. We are, of course, playing a whole bunch of stuff at the moment. We're kind of checking out Shattered Space at the moment, coming towards the end of that. And we've got some uh, Indiana Jones on the horizon, maybe a bit more Fallout London, and a few other bits and pieces. So lots of things to check out if you want uh, something to watch. But for now, thank you very much for watching. I look forward to speaking to you all very, very soon.